So recently, I saw a video by Jordan Peterson. Now, for those of you who don't know who Jordan Peterson is, he's a famous clinical psychologist who talks about a lot of controversial topics. But in the video that I saw, he was talking about his views on God. Now, he is not a Christian, but some of the questions that he asks really, really, really are worth pondering if you're a Christian. Let's go. Okay, so in the full video I watched, it's about 10 minutes long, and the real heart of what I want to talk about is in the first three minutes or so. So, kind of like how I did with the Corey Asbury video where I broke it up into three different sections, that's pretty much what I'm going to do with this as well. So, let's get into the first video. So, then the question came to me, do I believe in God? And I don't like that question. And people have complained at me a lot, and I'm sure they have their reasons because they don't like my answers, you know. I've got three, I had three sort of burgeoning hypotheses. One was, it's none of your business. That's the first one. And so, and you know, you could consider that a cop-out, and maybe it is. And then another one was, um, well, what do you mean by believe? Like, do you mean the words? Do you mean... To say the words, I believe in God, does that indicate that you believe in God? Like, I don't know what you mean by believe. I mean, is what you believe what you say or what you act out? Now, you know, I would say to some degree it's both, but if push comes to shove, as far as I'm concerned, what you believe is what you act out, not what you say. So in this first section here, he's begging the question, what matters more on what you believe? Is it what you say you believe or... Is it how you act according to what you believe? And he would offer the answer to the question to be what you say. And I would agree. And I think the Bible would agree too. James chapter 1 verse 22. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. So the Bible is very clearly saying there, don't just be listening to the word. Don't just be conceptually and theoretically acknowledging it but be living it out. And, and Jesus gives us a parable of that in Matthew 21, 28 through 31. Jesus tells the parable. What do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, no, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, son, you go. And he said, yes, sir, I will. But then didn't go. Which of these obeyed their father? They replied, the first. So that is biblical. This idea that we are not just supposed to be paying lip service to what we say we believe, but we are actually supposed to be living it out. And I think that as Christians, we need to make sure that we're making that a priority. So let's get into the second clip here. Let's say you say you do believe in God. You say, I believe in God. It's like, okay, well, that's hypothetically pretty impressive, I would say. It's like you believe that there's a divine power that oversees everything that is fundamentally ethical, that's watching everything you do, and, um, and you believe that. And so what effect does that have on your behavior if, if you believe it? Are you all in on your beliefs? Are you sacrificing everything to this transcendent entity that you proclaim belief in? Have you cleansed yourself of all your sin let's say are you making all the sacrifices okay so he kind of uh begs a lot of questions and talks about a couple different topics here uh i'm going to kind of do my best to go through them in order and wrap my brain around some of this stuff and um really give you guys what i think we should be taking away from it so the first thing he brings up is essentially what effect does the truth we believe in have on our behavior kind of like what we were talking about earlier are we being affected by what we say we believe, right? Is that actually playing itself out in the real world? Let's go to James chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Suppose you have a brother or sister with no food or clothing, and you say, Goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, eat well, but then you do not give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do, right? So that's what he's saying here. What effect does what you say you believe have on your life, right? What good is saying you believe in God if the evidence isn't there? 
right? What good is it to say to someone, hey, you know, eat well, stay warm, but then you don't actually do anything to show them that you legitimately want them to eat well and stay warm. And then the second thing that he asks, and this is huge for us, guys. This is huge for us Christians. He says, are you all in? My brothers and sisters, are we all in? Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Are we ready to die to ourselves every single day and take up our cross and follow Jesus to lay on the altar all of our wants, all of our desires and exchange them for Jesus, are we doing that? Are we actually, actually doing that? What, am I ready to give up my job, to give up my car, to give up my fill in the blank of whatever is important to you? Am I ready to give that up for the sake of Jesus? That's such an important question to ask, guys. It's not something to be taken lightly. We need to be all in. And then the third question he asks is, have we cleansed ourselves of all of our sin? Now, this is where I think Jordan Peterson really doesn't understand what the Christian believes. Because the Christian believes that we are incapable of cleansing ourselves of all our sin. Right? In Isaiah, he says that all of our good deeds are like filthy rags. On my best day, the sum amount of all of my goodness is filthy rags. It's trash. It's garbage. It is worth nothing compared to a perfectly holy God. I am incapable of being righteous by myself. Paul would also write, the good that I want to do, I don't do. And yet the sin that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He's stuck between this desire to not sin and being incapable of not sinning. You're probably saying, Liam, that sounds like some real bad news, my guy. How am I to be cleansed of my sin then? How am I supposed to be cleansed of all of my unrighteousness? I'm so glad you asked. Let's go. First John chapter one, verse seven through nine. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. That's what it is. This is no small thing, guys. This is no small thing. This is life itself. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is life itself. This is how important this is. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's all Jesus. Jesus does the work. We are just the very, very fortunate recipients of God's goodness and his grace and his mercy. Not of me, not of my works, not of my filthy rags. So now if you're not a Christian and you've made it this far, I really appreciate that, and it's about to pay off, because now I'm going to be talking directly to you. Let's get into this third clip. You know, one of the things Nietzsche said about Christianity, he was a great critic of Christianity, although also a great friend in a, in a very peculiar way, um, in that sometimes your best friend is the one who points out your weakest um, properties, let's say. He said, as far as he was concerned, there was only one Christian, and he died on the cross. So here Peterson is quoting a philosopher whose name was Nietzsche. Now, Nietzsche was wacko. I mean, he had a great, great, great mustache, but he had some really crazy ideas about the world and God in general, right? And he says there was only ever one Christian, and he died on the cross. Jesus wasn't a Christian, right? Because Christian just means little Christ. It was the, the derogatory name 
given to followers of Jesus. They were meant to be little Christs, Christians, right? So Jesus couldn't have been a follower of Christ and also be Christ. But I think the heart of what Nietzsche is trying to say with that is there was only one person who actually was unhypocritical, who was actually able to perfectly keep God's standard, and he died on the cross. And that is true. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And so it's true. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. The one person in human history who did not deserve to be brutally beaten and tortured and executed in the most torturous way that a person could be executed was Jesus Christ. And yet, he did. And here's the good news for you guys. Here's the good news. If you're a Christian and you need some encouragement, and if you're not a Christian and you need to hear the truth, here it is. The next verses in chapter 6 says, As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. So don't just listen to this. What I'm telling you right now, don't just listen to it and then ignore it. Just at the right time, I heard you on the day of salvation, I helped you indeed. The right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. If you're watching this and you are not a Christian, today is the day. Jesus lived. Jesus died for your sins. You are incapable of making yourself right with God through your own means. I need a savior. You need a savior. And despite the fact that it will cost you, it's worth it. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you liked this video. Uh, make sure you comment. Make sure you hit that like button so that way we can affect the YouTube algorithm. Please, please, please hit that subscribe and make sure you share this video with a friend. I love you guys. Peace.